I just always assumed that breastfeeding was the only way to go and my only option that I had. I never, formula was never just, I had never really pictured myself ever having kids, but when it came about, breastfeeding was the only way and I really had nothing to do with what anybody else said. Was my mother breastfed all of us? I think even if she formula fed us, I would still be pretty adamant about the fact that breastfeeding was the way. It's the natural way to <laughs> feed your child. It just was, it's instinctual to feel that way, that that's the way breastfeeding. It's hard to explain. I just, it's such a natural thing. That's really all I can explain it as. It's natural and that's how we've always been brought up until, you know, formula came in, which I don't even know when that happened. <laughs> I really was very confident going. I, my most biggest fear in the hospital was breastfeeding. When I was going breastfeeding, breastfeeding, I was not afraid of labor, I was afraid of breastfeeding. Just because I had heard horror stories of women who could not. But once she latched and she showed that she was successful at this and that we were doing this together, I was extremely confident. And there was nothing that really made any difference. I think I've been doing a pretty good job. I, my original goal to breastfeed was a, about a year or until she was ready. Um, about seven months she slowed down considerably and she's doesn't she does get formula sometimes now but she doesn't doesn't really like to be on the breast she would rather she's very busy she needs to hold her own bottle and you know feed herself and so I think I wish to have breastfed longer but I'm happy she made the choice that she is pretty much done with that. <laughs> my OB gave me a form to fill out about my birth plan so that they kind of all had an idea and had it on file of what I wanted to do and what I wished to do, which obviously things change when it's in the heat of the moment, but everything kind of worked out sort of the way that I wanted. <laughs> I would let other moms know that packing your bag before labor is a great idea. <laughs> I was in labor and brought hardly anything. I didn't bring my daughter very many outfits. I think I brought her one thing and a blanket from home. I needed more and it, I would have been more comfortable. While they were dealing with my complications, they kept me in the same room as my baby and and my partner, so he held her and talked to her, and you know, while uh, while I was in dealing with that, and after all of that, the family came in and visited and did their whole thing, and not long after they left, they they all understand that giving birth is tiring, uh, but it was nice. It gave me a break to eat while they were there. Um, then I took a shower with the help of my partner and the baby, the labor nurse took the baby and just kind of like wrapped her up, got her warm after taking a bath, which we were there for, um, and kept her in her care. She wasn't given anything at all until I fed her. So. The baby stayed in the room. Uh, they don't have a nursery there, so the only nursery they have is, you know, if the baby's immediately sick, um, things, different small tests that they have to do, but they don't have a nursery where babies stay, so the baby stayed right in the room with us, which was great. In my Lamaze class, they brought us through the hospital and gave us a tour of the labor and delivery room and the mothers and children's unit, so I knew going in that my daughter would be with us unless there was any other issues. My baby was fed only breast milk in the hospital. She, they offered formula when I was, when she was cluster feeding. She literally went from just regular, regular, uh, 
cycle feeding to cluster feeding in the next day. So that next evening I was totally shot from not sleeping for 48 hours and breastfeeding for the first time and no energy and then cluster feeding, which she was, I thought there was something wrong at that point. Cluster feeding is when the baby is eating just about every five to 10 minutes for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. So she's trying to get the, my milk came in very fast. And I'm not really sure if that happens for a lot of women, but mine didn't take two to three days. My milk came in in that first day. And so she would f feed every five to 10 minutes for 20 to 30 minutes. So I was literally running on nothing. And I got nervous that I wasn't producing enough. So I went and asked the nurses and they said that she's cluster feeding and this is normal. And if I needed a break, that they would feed her a bottle, which I refused, and they were fine with that, but they were also, which was nice to know that they could go either way. Um, they didn't force me into anything I didn't want to do, but they were very knowledgeable about what was going on, and they suggested that I did not use a breast pump for the at least the first four weeks of her life, and that I strictly breastfeed on the breast, so she would be used to it. So they said a lot of children or a lot of babies will go to a bottle after pumping and not take the boob again. And they also said that if I pumped, I would be producing too much or you know, I would start a schedule that I didn't need at the time. When I went to the women's and children's unit, they then I had a nurse come in and show me how to latch because I tried myself and it was, <laughs> you forget everything that you learn in your breastfeeding classes. It just <laughs> didn't, it wasn't there. So I just, I tried and I read the books that they gave me, but she came in and showed me and it was, that was a total success. I had a great time once I got into the mothers and children's unit and they were a lot of help and it was, it was hard to leave to know that I would have to do it on my own now and I didn't have that advice and that uh, push and drive from them. It was helpful just knowing that I had the support there when I needed it and I could always go to them with any questions about any of the food package and the breastfeeding and you know her in her first year of life really all together. I really it was, they were a ton of help and in the beginning I had a lot of questions just about WIC in general and they were very helpful. And I received my peer counselor's number and I think she called me before just to, to touch base and to let me, you know, kind of talk about what she does and what my role is and everything, which was nice. Um, and she was very bubbly and happy and that was great. Uh, she got in touch with me after I gave birth and she actually called me a few times. I was 21 days overdue. So she contacted me a few times before I actually had the baby, which I honestly ignored the telephone calls because at that point I never thought I was giving birth. So I didn't want to talk to anybody about what my plans were. Um, but once I finally did, I contacted her and let her know that this is what I did, and then I'm breastfeeding, da, 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 you know, every, all of that information that she needed to know. And I think it would have been extremely helpful if I needed the help. I didn't call her after that. Uh, she touched base with me a couple of times to make sure everything was still going okay. But other than that, she was, I didn't really need a ton of help. I think it's extremely helpful for everybody else to take use in the peer counselor. Yeah. Emotionally, it was hard having to be the only one doing this and all the time and going back to work. I went back to work after four weeks of her life and it was extremely hard to keep up pumping and I was so adamant that breastfeeding was the way to go and that's what I was doing that emotionally I was drained 
I was, I would cry every night. I was tired. I wasn't feeling, I was getting, I just wasn't feeling like things were fair in the household and I was doing way more. Um, and physically, I had mastitis three times, a clogged duct once, and a, I actually just have gotten fully recovered from a clogged gland. So I've had a really tough time breastfeeding and a lot of it had to do with the long hours of my work shift and I work with people so in a restaurant I can't leave at any time um, I have to wait until they're all taken care of and then I can go and pump and take care of myself which made it a very hard thing and that's where the mastitis came from and it was terrible but I did it <laughs> I was very determined. I had, that was what she wanted and needed and I wasn't going to take that away because of something that was going on with me, because of the pain I was going through. She had then become more important than my needs. The only time he fed the baby was when I was at work. So I would still have to pump throughout the day and make sure I had the the supply that I needed and I was kind of nervous. I was always very nervous that I wouldn't have the right supply. So I had an excessive amount of breast milk in my freezer at all times. But um, it, I never felt like it ever actually evened out until she slowed down and I didn't have to pump as much. And I originally went to the ER for my first bout of mastitis. Once I knew and could identify the symptoms of mastitis, I and I got it the second time, I called my doctor right away. He filled out the prescription. Um, my first one only lasted about 24 hours. I got, it was very fast. I, first sign of it, I literally I had no idea what was happening, so I went right to the ER. Um, the second time, it took about a day, and I think I had it for three days. And um, my doc, all my o all the OBs and that I worked with were very, um, they were encouraging to keep going, and they said that to get rid of this quicker, you need to keep breastfeeding on this mastitis so it was the only trouble I had was just the mastitis and it wasn't trouble it was just pain so it was rather it was somebody had to write me a prescription and they did and once I had uh, my clogged duct I went and got that checked out by the OB and I kept breastfeeding I didn't stop I don't I don't really know any differently than to just go to the doctor and get the medicine and just keep going. It takes a lot of drive to be extremely successful breastfeeding. Uh, you need to have that go-getter attitude. Uh, I think a lot of women, I can't say for them, but from what I've heard from friends, they a lot of them have stopped for the pain and for the inconvenience in their life um, and some just felt that they weren't producing enough which I always felt that way but it was never that way and it, our bodies are like made to do this and that's you know what what we have boobs for so <laughs> I really think it was it's a no-brainer to to do that to breastfeed and I have all the support I needed from my family and my friends. Um, they were very supportive. I did have some issues with some people being unsupportive in my partner's family, but I got through that with the strength of my mother, who's very all natural, grew up that way, and she was really into it, and she helped me out a lot. I have such a strong personality and strong opinions that once I have something that I feel I'm going to do and as I need to do, 
and things are going well with it and it's working for me and it's working for my daughter now, um, there was really nobody telling me any differently. I was going to breastfeed and I actually would become angry when they even suggested formula. So. <laughs> I wanted to stop so much. <laughs> I never wanted to keep going, especially with the pain that I was dealing with with mastitis and my clogged duct and my clogged gland. It was a very hard experience for me, but I just the way that my daughter would look at me or she was just so satisfied do breastfeeding and nursing with me. I just wouldn't have wanted to break that bond because of the pain I was feeling. I think I it was manageable pain. I could manage that. Um, and the, my OB was there to help if I needed anything other than the antibiotics. They wanted to help me just as much. I think a lot of women have challenges on the inconvenience in their life. Um, it's, if you think of it as an inconvenience or in that way, I think you have to put it in a different perspective. Um, this is not now just your life, this is the child's life and breastfeeding is the most important way to feed your baby in the first year of their life, they say, you know, until, or until they are all done with it. I think you need to know that you are producing enough and it's okay that they eat a lot because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to thrive and you want them to be eating and gaining weight and eating and that's all you can really hope for. I think a lot of women are challenged in a lot of different ways and you just got to keep going. <laughs> my, I wish my partner and I had gone over skin to skin we sort of had the conversation that this is what we were going to do and it was based around me. So I knew what I needed to do to fulfill the skin to skin. He didn't once it came to him. We weren't expecting things to go happen the way that they did. So when I asked and they sort of brushed me off, it was a little aggravating because you never know what's going to happen in labor. So if you want to do skin to skin, go through it with your partner so they know exactly what to do and when to do it. I think my best friend would just need to stay strong and keep going and no matter what happens, she can do it and don't listen to the negativity of other people and do it because it was the best way for us and my daughter's healthy and happy and I wouldn't have it any other way. I would tell my friend about breastfeeding that it's going to be painful and it's going to hurt and you're just going to have to get through that first week because just as fast as it hurts, it goes away. So the hospital was really great about getting me all the supplies I needed. I went in there with nothing for breastfeeding. I never even knew why people were giving me lanolin and giving me <laughs> all of this cream and pads. I didn't bring any of this. Uh, the nurses supplied it all. The hospital brought it all to me and helped me with all the soothing ways. And But definitely let them know that it hurts. <laughs> That's one, one thing that I was told that if it hurts, you're doing it wrong. Well, I was doing it right and she was getting enough and it still was painful. You're not used to having somebody on your boob all the time, so that's a change you have to toughen up. Partners need to read into the perspective of a nursing mother. Uh, they need to realize that it's taking more out of you than you could ever imagine. Um, in, in a way, it's, it's harder than being pregnant and dealing with everything that comes in your body and the things that happen, uh, it's they the partners definitely need to be informed that it's an emotional and rough time for a woman 
especially postpartum. Uh, but other than that, I know nobody really knows what they really want when they're pregnant and ready to give birth. And you may think that that's what you want, but it changes. But go in there with a sense of what you, what you need and what you want and make sure that everybody else knows that and understands that. Ha <laughs>